what was the impetus for you to kind of uh, decide on, on, on doing a movie about a robot that kind of saved humanity? I mean, it's a big topic yeah. to take well, on. Well, it initially started as just the last robot on Earth, and I was just the loneliest guy I'd ever heard of, this, this robot that just kept doing the same thing forever, not knowing it was a waste of time. That was, to me, so attractive for just a character in general that I said, that's strong stuff. And then the opposite, uh, you know, years later when I decided to tackle it, um, the opposite of loneliness is love. And so I thought, well, it's got to be a love story. So it just was a natural progression. And then I got to the, this poetic point of thinking, what if he understood, even naively, the point of living more than anybody else did anymore? And I just loved that. And that, that just really spoke to me. So I, then I ran with it. How does one kind of go with that story then? I mean, the, 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 t the conversations that you must have had with... It's long and arduous. I mean, to be honest, it was very easy to track how to capture the charm of Wally and how to tell his parts of the story and how to track the relationship. My co-writer Jim, Jim Reardon and I, we both uh, married our high school sweethearts and we have, it's very easy for us to sort of have similar stories of just the arc of that kind of a relationship. Um, but all the choices of what's the backdrop of humanity, what's the scope of this thing, you know, it's the whole world's vacated and where did everybody go and what's going on, that was like a million choices that, and we, did, we took a million wrong turns. It, it was it, it, until it finally, what kept us navigated in the right direction was finally realizing what the theme of the movie was and making sure everything amplified that theme. <laughs> Which for me was a rational love defeats life's programming. Did having access to Hello Dolly, in, in a sense, was did that really kind of? That was a Reese's peanut butter moment, where a peanut butter cup moment, where I just honestly was just throwing different songs in front of the beginning of the movie. I just wanted something old fashioned, and it was this really weird idea. I threw that on, and I was like, that really works. And then I couldn't figure out why, and I said, that's the weirdest idea I've ever had. And then when I realized the content of the song's really about two guys that just want to break up for one night have a real experience and kiss a girl, I thought That's, that, that, that fits. And then as I investigated the movie further, I found all these other elements to use and it, it just became just, I couldn't ignore how well it helped the movie, knowing I would answer this question for the rest of my life. To have a movie where there really is no dialogue and so you... I would argue that. There, there is, is dialogue later. all through it. That's what I'm going to ask you. How does, how does one create a dialogue then? You hire Ben Burt and you get out of his way. <laughs> it's pretty much what I did. The genius that is Ben, how does, I, what does he do? Well, he, I don't know what he does. He's like a, a wizard of sound. He just goes back there and makes these amazing sounds and then you find out later that it was you know, from a can of tuna in his backyard. I don't know. You know it's like, I don't know how he does that stuff. And I don't, all I care is that he does it. And, my job is to sort of corral it and sort of pick and choose and, and narrow it down, winnow it down to what's the essentials or what are the right things to use, just like a, you know, I have to pick takes for actors or takes for shots and editing. That's my job. I just get, hire really talented people that produce these amazing things and get out of their way. To, to actually have the third act of the film where having humans actually do show up, mm -hmm. in a, in a, but they are, the surprise is they're, they're, they have no contact with anything, so they right. kind of which become... Which was defeating the whole... Which was you know, supporting the whole point of the of the love story. So, do you feel like it is part of the way humans are heading towards these days? Well, I think it's a risk. I think any any science fiction is going to grab on some slight truth, and maybe go that way. If you look back at any sci-fi films, it's somewhat is a reflection of what people's concerns were at that time. Um, to be honest, I didn't get it from the the current headlines because I we had that idea years ago. We went with logic. We went with if you're just sitting around with nothing to do and you have no purpose, then your body would probably just say, you don't need to grow up, you'd just be a big baby. And when I found out the scientific fact from, this, uh, from NASA that uh, they, they're really concerned about being able to simulate gravity just right for any long-term travel to, let's say, Mars or something, if they don't get it just right, disuse atrophy is going to kick in and you'll start to lose your bones. And they've had arguments that if we don't get this right, and we've, we've done the math wrong, there'll be a big blob when they come back. And so I said, well, there's my, there's my scientific fact to run the fiction with. It's genius. Thank you very <laughs> much.